The test shown in figure is primarily used for measuring compressive strain, tensile strain, shear stress, all of the above. So see this image. This is showing diametral compression test. Okay. This image is showing you diametral compression test. And this diametral compression test is used to measure the tensile strain. Okay. This is used to measure the tensile strain. Diametral tensile strain. Okay, so here answer would be tensile strength for this question. Okay, now see the tensile strength that can be determined. First of all, see tensile strength. Now this can be determined by subjecting a rod, for example, take a rod or a wire or a dumbbell shaped specimen is there. You can take like a dumbbell shaped specimen is this. Okay, so if tensile loading is there in all these, you have tensile loading, you are giving the tensile loading and tension. Basically, this is tensile loading implies tension. So, if you apply tensions at both the ends, then tensile strength can be can be determined. Okay, for these specimens. Now, when a plastic deformation is not there, lack of plastic deformation for adaptation to the gripping device of uh, the conventional tensile test and alignment makes tensile test for brittle materials different. Now, there, if this is a brittle material. If this is a brittle material and you are trying to have the tensile strain, measure the tensile strain by this, then here immediate fracture will occur. You won't be able to get the exact value of the tensile strain of this material. Okay. And plus the, the deformation, lack of plastic deformation is here. Okay. And it is not be not able to like uh, grip in a conventional tensile test apparatus. So in that case, we do what? We will, we will like see like this is a cylinder like right? so they, we will do what we will do a diametral tensile test that is diametral compression test now see here we will apply load from top okay a short cylinder or disc is laid on the side it is laid on the side and load is applied from top along the diameter of the cylinder this is the diameter of the cylinder okay this is the diameter of the cylinder see this is the diameter of the cylinder so this load is along the cylinder of the along the diameter of the cylinder okay now this load this load will generate the tensile strain this load will generate the tensile strain this load will generate tensile strain tensile stress okay it will generate the tensile strain perpendicular to the vertical plane passing through the center of the disc okay now see here you can see this this is a disc and we are applying this load. This is the load. This is the load. This is the specimen which we are testing here. Okay. This is the specimen which we are testing here. Here we are putting the load and it is the diameter along this the it is going and this is the tension that is being generated. Tension is being generated line at the line perpendicular to the diameter. Okay. And this is strength value. This is what this is called. This is known as diameter compression test. Okay. Now this uh, this tension this will cause what this will cause expansion the cylinder will expand laterally okay cylinder will expand laterally in response to this tension which we are applying the load which are applying in the in response to that this tension is generated and this is leading to expansion of this expansion of this cylinder laterally okay so this test is referred to as the diametral compression test this is what we are talking about that is diametral compression test diametral compression test and the strength value that is obtained that is diametral tensile strength we are obtaining diametral tensile strength here okay now in this method uh, compressive load is applied by a flat plate this is a flat plate this is applying the compressive load on this specimen okay this is a cylindrical specimen or disc also you can see now fracture should occur along the vertical plane along the vertical plane this fracture should occur along this plane this is the dashed line along this the fracture should occur okay in this method the fracture should occur along this vertical plane and the diametral tensile strength how do we cal calculate that this diameter tensile strength diametral tensile strength which we are talking about how will we calculate that? That is 2F upon 
pi d into 2. Okay. Now what is f? The f is this applied load. This will be f. Okay. This is f. Now d is the diameter of this. This disc is this diameter. This is d. Okay. And the, this t is the thickness of the disc. This t is the thickness of the disc. See, f is the applied load. f is the applied load. d is diameter of the disc. Diameter of the specimen or the disc. Plus t is the thickness of the disc. Okay. So, this test is very simple to conduct and provides excellent reproducibility. However, the use of this test on materials that exhibit appreciable plastic deformation before fracture will result in erroneously high tensile strength values. If the material which we are using that is having plastic deformation to a appreciable degree, then this will get false positive, false high, false 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 high results, false high results of high tensile strength value. Okay. High tensile resistance value. This test is given for what? For brittle materials. Basically, for brittle materials who do not have significant plastic deformation. But if we give this for a material with significant plastic deformation, then absolutely you will get false high values. Okay. Then another thing, another uh, point regarding this test that is unreliable test result is you see the fracture of the specimen is occurring in several small small pieces. The ideal fragmentation is into two segments upon increasing the load. The fragmentation will be two segments. Okay. Fragmentation in two segments. That is the ideal case. That is the ideal case. But if small, small pieces, it breaks into several small pieces, then also that will be unreliable result. Okay. So these are the interpretations of this result. Apart from calculating the values of diametral tensile strength. Okay. So see now this is this is showing. Here it is applying load, see, and uh, the fracture is occurring in the dotted line, just as we just now saw when this was a specimen and we were applying load, then along this line the fracture was occurring, okay, and this was the diameter also, the fracture was occurring along this line, this was the, in this direction the tension was developing and that was leading to a ex slight expansion of the disc, okay, so Basically, this is diametral tensile strength and this test is, this the image which is shown here, the operator shown here, this is showing exactly the things that we discussed just now. See, here the fracture is occurring upon the application of load F, so you can call it as F and the diameter of this disc you can call it as D, okay. The thickness of the disc you can take as T, then here the diametral tensile strength if we calculate that will be 2F upon pi d into t okay so here answer would be tensile strength even if the option was diametral tensile strength that would also be most correct option but that is not given here still tensile strength is sufficient you can mark the answer as tensile strength upon seeing this apparatus okay this is diametral compression test this is diametral compression test measuring diametral tensile strength answer would be option two